Okay, in this video, I am going to show you how to overlay waveforms in the Picoscope software. Now, this may not be something that you would do every day, but it can be a really useful feature whenever you want to compare two waveforms to each other. Overlaying them can make it really easy to spot the differences. So, here's an example. This is a waveform taken from one of the cylinders of an engine that was occasionally misfiring. By itself, it's hard to spot anything wrong with this waveform, but when I overlay the other waveform, now we can see I still have the original waveform from the misfiring cylinder, but I also have overlaid another cylinder waveform from the same engine. This is a cylinder that's not misfiring. And immediately, when I start comparing the two, I can see the differences. And those are things that would have been a little bit harder to spot without the overlay. So this overlay really helps us see what might be going on with that cylinder and identify a mechanical issue with it. One more example is this waveform right here. This is the before and after waveform of a crankshaft position sensor. The green waveform was the original signal that came from the original sensor, and the blue waveform was taken after the sensor was replaced. So you can see that the amplitude is quite a bit higher. I could use this if I needed to explain to a customer why I replaced that sensor. I could use this to justify what I did in correcting this condition. So now let's go take a look at how we would overlay these waveforms. So I have here the two waveforms from this crankshaft sensor. I have this one, which is the crankshaft sensor before the repair, and this one, which was after. So I'm going to go into one of these, and I'm going to make it my reference waveform. And the way I do that is I come into this waveform, come up here to Tools, Reference Waveforms, and you'll see that I have available to me Channel A. So I'll double-click on that, and it creates a reference waveform in my library. Now I can edit this, and I can change the color so that it's easy to distinguish this reference waveform from the other waveform. I click OK. And now I can completely close this waveform if I want to. And now I am in the waveform that was taken after the repair. Now I come up here to Tools again and Reference Waveforms, and now I should see down here in my library the reference waveform that I created. I select that box and click OK. You may not see it very well because it's actually behind the blue waveform. But it's there. You can see that both waveforms have been overlaid. Now here are a couple of things you can know about this. We can adjust this. I can bring the green one to the front right here. When I click on this little box in the right hand corner, it gives me the settings for this green waveform and I can choose to bring it to the front or send it to the back. If I wanted these to line up with each other, I can do that right here. Now as I look at these, I can see that these are not at the same RPM, so it wouldn't do much good to line them up. Now really, to overlay waveforms like this, you want them to be at the same RPM. Sometimes it's difficult to do. So try when you're capturing both waveforms to get them at the same RPM. But here's a little trick. If I zoom in just the right amount, come down here to this little arrow and scroll across the screen. Now, as I'm scrolling, hopefully the camera can pick this up, but I can see that it looks like the green waveform is kind of marching to the right and the blue one is marching to the left. Now watch. As this moves across, you might see some point where that changes, where they start to... They slow down and stop and kind of line up each other. Right here, you'll notice they're starting to look about the same speed. Now they're both going backwards. There are a few times, like right here, where the RPMs are very close to each other, and I could see that as I was scrolling through it. Now if I want to make these match up with each other, I'll see this double pulse right here and the double pulse right here. I simply want to bring my rulers over and find out how far off they are. So I'll mark off that and mark off that. And it gives me a difference of 12.26 milliseconds. And so I want to come down to this green overlay, and I want to back it up 12.26 milliseconds. So I come up here to my delay, and I'll put negative 12.26 milliseconds. If I wanted to go the other direction, I'd make that a positive number. As I do that, you'll see that it lined those two up, and my RPM wasn't perfect. Otherwise, my next pulse would be lined up as well. But that's how I can get the two waveforms to line up with each other if I want to do that. Now let's do this one more time with a cylinder compression waveform. Here are two cylinders that were actually taken while the engine was running at the same time. So both, we had a pressure transducer in two different cylinders, in a cylinder that was misfiring and in a cylinder that wasn't. These are not overlays. These are actually channel A and channel B. But in order for me to line these up, I need to make one of them an overlay. So I would come up here to Tools, Reference Waveforms, and I'm going to make channel B the overlay. Okay, now I'm going to turn cylinder 4 on as an overlay. 
and come up here and turn off channel B so that I'm not looking at it at the same time. To line these up, I would come out here and find the distance between the two, which is about 30.62 milliseconds, and I'd come over here to this overlay, and I would change the delay to negative 30.86 milliseconds, and they should be lined up pretty well. Now I may want to make sure that my zeros are lined up with each other as well. Now an easy way to do that is to come up here and I put zero in here. And I pull this ruler down and put zero in here. And I want to make sure that they're lined up with each other so that my pressures are equal. And now I can compare the two cylinders. I can see that there is very obviously something different about this cylinder that has the misfire. And I can take some time and analyze it and see if I can figure out what's causing that. So that's a quick overview of how you would overlay two waveforms so that you can compare them to each other.